The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is on the air and it's heard on WNOV 860 AM and W293 CX 106.5 FM in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. WWDB 860 AM, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. WAAM 1600 AM and 92.7 FM, Ann Arbor, Michigan. And KMET 1490 AM, Banning, California. Coming up on the program, we're going to go over how you can grow successful tomatoes in your garden, raised bed, or containers, as well as you can grow a lot of produce with just these plants. We'll tell you what they are and how to grow them, as well as author from the Straw Bell Gardens Complete, Joe Carson will be with us. We're talking about growing in straw bales, plus your garden questions. The hour's jam-packed. Let's start it right now. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. So glad you've taken time out of your day to join us in the program, whether you're in Milwaukee, Philadelphia, Southeast Michigan, Banning, California, or anywhere else listening via the simple radio app, the TuneIn app, or through the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com website under the radio tab, podcast replay, or in-studio video replay. We are thankful that you've tuned into the program. I am your host, Joy Baird. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend, and gardening partner, Holly Baird. You can find all of our content at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com where there's over 1,300 garden videos, short and long format of in-garden and in-studio videos and podcasts of this particular show in segments and full uh, shows of all three seasons. You can get a hold of the, the, the executive sponsor of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. You can, it's Ivy Organic. Yeah, the executive plant. sponsor of the Wisconsin Vegetable is Power Planter. Planting conditions are always favorable with the power planter, Earth Auger. No matter what the job is, power planter has the right size for you. Simply attach to a drill and let the power planter do the work for you. Create planting holes fast and efficiently with ease. No matter the soil type, it does the job effortlessly. Increase your root to soil contact. Leave the shovel and the spade in the shed. Hand welded and made in the USA, and we offer a lifetime warranty on product defects. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. You can get a hold of us in a variety of different ways, uh, and they all revolve around the Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard Hotline. Ivy Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard naturally protects plants against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents, protects newly installed plants and trees, shields prune and damaged surfaces for use on your roses, fruit and nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. The product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For more information, visit ivorganics.com. You can reach us by the ivorganics.com 3-in-1 plant guard email inbox, and that address is twvgshow at gmail.com. Or you can text us on the instant access ivorganics.com text line, and that's 414-368-9311. You can tweet us using hashtag TWVG, or Twitter handle is at TWVG show. Don't forget our text line is at 414-368-9311. So you can do that. Uh, while we, we're going to get into how you can grow the best tomatoes. Now, uh, for those of you who are in California, this is not that relevant, but there is content that we're going to provide that you can apply now while your plants are just being planted or have already been planted. This is not just a, here's what you got to do before. This is a whole gamut of how you can, throughout the whole process of starting to harvesting your tomatoes. And this is something that, you know, tomatoes are one of the most popular plants that anybody grows. Um, there are some people that do not like tomatoes and don't grow them, but there are a few and far between. So we've, we grow about 110 tomatoes each year, and we've been doing this for a number of years, and we've found out different methods and followed and watched and learned from other gardeners, master gardeners, university extension offices, on how we have found to be the successful, uh, re, the, the most success that we found. Right. So you want to, if you're going to grow tomatoes in a container, a lot of people ask me this question because they know that tomatoes need full sun. They might not have full sun, so they grow them in like a five-gallon bucket or a grow bag or whatever. And you want to make sure you have the right size of container for your tomatoes. If it's a heavy-producing tomato, like a vine tomato, like a 
like a beef steak, black creme, black creme. Um, you want to make sure you're using at least a five gallon bucket, drainage holes in all and containers. drainage holes, and that you have that right size. But then there's something like a tiny Tim, which is a smaller hybrid variety. It's kind of no, like it's a, an heirloom variety. That's it's an heirloom. Sorry, sixteen inches tall. Yeah, sixteen inches tall. It's like a tiny little bush tomato, and it's it's fun to a grow. Heavy producer, and it produces a lot of cherry tomatoes. And that's something you could grow in your patio if you get proper sunlight. We did it in a one gallon grow bag right. last year from Root Maker, and it worked really, really well. So the biggest uh, another thing is you want, just as I had mentioned, you want to think about where you're putting these tomatoes. Tomato, if you grow up for the root or the fruit, you want full sun. If you grow up for the greens or the leaves, you can do partial shade. So tomatoes, you're growing for the fruit, so you want to make sure you have full shade or full sun. Now, and that now means that, that's, that kind of you can at, have some shade. Yeah, and we found that the people, that if you're going to grow for cherry varieties, like you talked about, or grape varieties, you can get away with a little less sun. It's right, the big one. It's the big one. So if you're trying to grow a nice, big tomato, slicing tomato, you definitely want to look for that full sun area. And, like, we have a, what is that, a maple tree? Yeah, a giant above, maple tree. Above the middle part of our garden, and that's not terrible. We've planted tomatoes underneath it because it's a south-facing garden, so it gets a lot of east and west sun. But if you have, like, an only east-side garden or west-side garden, you wouldn't want a big tree over it. And it's beneficial because during the hottest portions of the day during the summer, it actually adds a little relief to the plants that it shades. So it does uh, kind of help. It benefits and. Uh, in some aspects of the uh, benefit of having a tree there. Um, and so then also compost. So you want to you want to make sure whether you're growing in a raised bed or container, straw bale, what have you, you want to make sure you're using compost or good potting soil mix. If you're growing in the ground, you want to make sure your soil is healthy. That's right. And it has good nutrients and it's not... You're not growing in some dusty old gray dirt. Oh, and even if you don't know, you need to get a soil test from Soil Savvy. Uh, you can use TWVG19 and save 10% on your order, and they'll give you 14 points of analyzation of what's going on with your soil. The abundance, the, the lacking, how to fix it, because we just can't look at soil and go, okay, that pH or that soil is this and it has this. There's no way of knowing that unless we get an analyzation of the soil to know where we're at. Right. And there's no more better, bigger disappointment than you've put all this time and effort in, money, uh, starts, all this stuff, and then the plant doesn't produce at all because you have poor soil. Exactly. One of the other things is people don't, I know like in the city people do this, but you grew up not in the city. Right. Um, is caging or staking your tomatoes. Well, we caged them. Uh, we caged them it, the, uh, for tomatoes. But like cucumbers and, and other vine crops, we never caged anything. Except well, for some tomatoes. people don't cage right. them. Right. That's right. But we have to cage the tomatoes. When we plant them, we have to cage them. You, you get 50% more uh, production when you get them off the ground because otherwise they sit on the ground, they ripen, and they rot. But let's before we talk about well, we've talked about caging, let's talk about how we plant the tomato or what sure. we need to do in so order to get that. You plant the tomato. You, we plant our tomatoes deep. And this allows, well, tomato's part of the nightshade family. If you look at your tomato stem, it has all these little hairs, very, like, white, clear hairs that are coming off the stem, and that means that those are p- potential roots. Not all vegetables in the nightshade family have this pro- have this ability, but tomatoes um, definitely do. So when you plant that tomato, if you plant it deep, it's going to develop roots off of that stem. And so when you plant them deep, it allows for better roots growth development so More root roots, to soil your plant root to soil contact and then what we do is after we plant it deep we remove about three to six inches of not well not right away we remove the bottom row of leaves so it's not touching the soil and then as the plant grows we continue to remove the leaves about th- six inches or so yeah. we plant the three quarters of the plant goes in the ground quarter of the plant stays above the ground to get all that stem to soil contact. What we can put, and people say, well, what do you put in the hole at the time of planting? Because everybody's got their magical mix that they've all swear by, and that's great. If you've been using a certain 97 different things you put in the hole at the time of planting for tomatoes, and it continues to work for you, continue to do it. We keep it very simple. Uh, You can add crushed crushed powdered eggshells. If you just throw the eggshell in the hole, it's not going to break down in time to add uh, nutrients to the plant during this growing season. Secondly, you can use an all balance fertilizer. We recommend Dr. Earth uh, tomato and veg and herb fertilizer. It's a very balanced fertilizer and it gives the plants what it needs. The ven- a benefit of a v- organic fertilizer versus a liquid fertilizer is 
the plant picks up in the organic fertilizer what it needs when it needs it. Liquid fertilizer or an organic or a, 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 a liquid fertilizer of a chemical form or a chemical fertilizer of a granular form, the plants get all of it at once. It's an instant hit, and they become addicted to it. And your plants become drug addicts, essentially, because they, they, uh, they do not do well if they're not continued fed that fertilizer of the chemical form. It Definitely. messes them up. So, yeah, so there's something... And people put egg sh- or, uh, uh, powder powder milk, milk eggshells, tums, tums yeah. whatever. Whatever works for you, that's fine. Keep doing that. But we don't have to add extra calcium, and that's what those particular items provide the plant. Because you probably have plenty of calcium in your garden. You're just not watering the plant enough for the plant to pick up the calcium. So if you've ever had blossom and rot, it's basically when you take your tomato, you pick it off the vine, you look at the bottom of it, which is the blossom end, and it's rotted. It's like black, um, sometimes brownish colored, and it just looks bleh. So that's blossom end rot. And what that is is a lack of a- lack of access of calcium to your plants. So this commonly happens because we plant our tomatoes typically here around Memorial Day weekend, and then at that point it's usually been a pretty wet spring. Um, We've usually had a lot of rain, and then by the time the tomatoes start to fruit, maybe we've reached not necessarily a drought, but we've had some dry days, and now your garden is not as... Moist. Moist, as you would like it to be. Um, and so that causes a problem. So if you continually water, use irrigation, this will help help eliminate that problem because the calcium is not locked up in your soil and your plants have access to it. In addition to that, there's a lot of diseases your plant's going to get. 90% of the problems from uh, the diseases are from soil splashing up on the leaves. So we want to mulch, and we want to mulch heavy with chemical-free seed-free grass clippings, shredded leaves, straw, straw. whatever we can whatever, get. Yeah, whatever works for to you. To prevent soil from splashing up. In addition, that holds moisture in, so less watering, more moisture in the soil, so better calcium pickup from the plant so you don't have the blossom in rot, and the suppression of weeds. If the weeds can't get sun exposure, they can't grow, so you're working, you're, you're killing a lot of birds with one stone. Uh, when you use mulch. Trimming the leaves. We do this continuously throughout the season. You want to trim the bottom six inches of your tomatoes as the growth occurs, especially to keep it from touching the soil. Ground up the stem six to eight inches. Keep that bottom stem completely opened up uh, and, and keep adding mulch. And we want to water consistently, as we've talked about. And then also you want to keep harvesting as you continually harvest, the plant will produce more. If you don't harvest, they're going to shut down on you right away. That's every vegetable that we grow. Well, that's just a small snippet of how you can grow successful tomatoes in your garden. You can find a whole lot more videos on our website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com. Look under, just search the Wisconsin, just search tomato growing. Well, when we come back, we're going to talk about what plants can you grow in your garden that will produce a ton of produce just from a few plants. That's all coming up next. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Use Twitter to reach Joey and Holly at TWVG Show or hashtag TWVG. Dharmaceuticals essential oils are high grade, very pure, and high in quality. They have synergized blends made with the finest raw materials. For more information and to order, visit dharmaceuticals.com. Pomona's Universal Pectin is high quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar, honey, or any alternative sweetener you'd like. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Available at most natural food stores and online. Do you seek safe, effective nutrition solutions to boost your health and quality of life? Standard Process is your trusted whole food supplement manufacturer with 90 years of expertise. Our third generation family owned company proudly grows nutrient rich ingredients at our certified organic farm in Palmyra, Wisconsin, enabling us to produce high quality whole food solutions that change lives. For help identifying the best supplements for you, find a local healthcare professional today at standardprocess.com forward slash patients. 
Natural Healing Ointment, USDA Certified Organic. Get your tube at nunuhealing.com. Your plants are greener when using Hydrobox, revolutionary in plant watering. Hydrobox catches the water from water and delivers it straight to the roots to release when plants need it. You will water three times less often and plants grow faster. Hydrobox is an innovative little gel-filled pouch that goes in the bottom of a pot, container, or grow bag. Multiple sizes based on need. Easy to install and use for indoor and outdoor use. Saves time and money. Lasts up to three years. Look for it at homedepot.com or visit gohydrobox.com. Help those little guys out. This garden tip is sponsored by Biosafe. Organic solutions that are effective. They offer an array of eco-friendly products. From plant food to fertilizer to one-of-a-kind herbicides. Organic weed killer. Grow stronger, healthier with Biosafe. Visit Biosafe.net to learn more. And save 10% on your next order by using coupon code TWVG at checkout. Even if you've properly hardened your seedlings off correctly, it is still best, if possible, to transplant them on a cloudy day into the garden. This helps to plant transition easier into its new home. Take the pain out of planting with the Pro Plugger 5-in-1 planting tool. Step, twist, pull, and you're ready to plant. Digs perfect size planting holes. Soil gets stored in the tube and empties from the top. Help for, for weeding. ProPlugger.com. World's CoolestRainGauge.com. Need I say more? Eco Garden Systems is a revolutionary way to grow food. A fully contained raised platform with a conventional watering system. Solar power unit optional. Made from recycled material in the U.S., Eco Garden Systems Raised Garden Bed offers sustainable organic gardening that is environmentally sound, quick and easy to set up, maintain, and fun to use. Fill your garden with soil and plant your seeds. Your Eco Garden will take care of the rest. Can set up in backyard, patio, and even your driveway, any level surface. For more information, visit EcoGardenSystems.com. Use coupon code WIVEG2019 and get $295 off listed price of $1,695 plus free shipping, a $250 value at EcoGardenSystems.com. When it comes to bulk landscaping materials, Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center is where everyone goes. Whatever the project, we have the materials you need with over 40 varieties to choose from. Soils, mulches, gravels, decorative stones, fresh cut sod. Blue Mills has these products in stock and ready for easy pickup or fast delivery. So what are you waiting for? Now is the time to get your yard back into shape. Stop in and pick these materials up or call us for delivery today. Nobody does bulk landscaping materials better than Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center. Blue Mills, 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Clyde's Vegetable Planting Chart, Dharmaceutical, Dr. Earth, Flame Engineering, Handy Safety Knife, Hydro Box, Wisconsin Greenhouse Company, MI Gardener, Outpost Natural Food Co-op, Root Maker, Soil Diva, Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. This is Mike Novak. And this is Peggy Malecki. From the Mike Novak Show with... Peggy Malecki. And we're broadcasting out of Chicago, but you know what? Whenever we get a chance, we listen to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. With Joey and Holly Baird. And we've actually been to their vegetable garden. Now, we won't ruin no, uh, your no, your no. image of what they do. No, they're actually quite good gardeners. And But you have to listen to the show. Yes, you do. And here they are, Joey and Holly. Dr. Earth is committed to clean and healthy gardening through creating cutting-edge, natural, organic, friendly products. Based on research and innovation every 28 years, they are the leader in organic lawn and garden industry. They do not use ingredients such as biosolids or composted household waste or synthetic chemicals. Instead, they have manure-free fertilizer, organic soils, insect control, and liquid fertilizer. If you want to grow the best quality food organically to feed your family, that is the founding principles of what Dr. Earth is all about. They have experts to find the most innovative ways to help you grow your best organically. Visit DrEarth.com for more information on where to buy. When it comes to planting our garden, we want to plant things that are going to produce for us and give us a bounty of harvest, a big yield. Not all crops do that, but we've gone over the numbers and we've picked up 
picked out several popular plants in which most of us grow or have grown in our garden, and we're going to provide you with how much they actually produce. That's the thing. We want to plant a few plants of a particular variety, and we want to get an abundance of harvest. We don't want to plant 800 plants to get a little bit to eat. Uh, so let's talk about bush beans and pole beans here. Very popular plant. Uh, the difference between the two are bush beans grow on a bush, pole beans grow on a pole. But bush beans take 40 to 60 days to reach maturity, produce for two to four weeks, then that they're done, their life cycle is over. Pole beans take 60, uh, 70 to 80 days to reach maturity and will produce all the way up to frost. There are some diseases in which they can uh, uh, get by the end of the growing season, but that's another time, uh, another conversation. You also have to uh, uh, trellis your pole beans. Correct. So that's something. And with all of these crops, uh, majority of them, if you do not continue to harvest, you're going to get one harvest and that's it. A lot of these crops you can continue to harvest all the way up until the plant quits producing or the, or the fall temperatures kill it. So, so zucchini... You know, well, let's talk about bush beans here. Oh, okay. Th- three to five pounds uh, per 10-foot row based on the variety, and you want to pick them consistently, and you want to plant that row every two weeks, uh, a new row every two weeks called succession planting, so you have a harvest throughout the year. Now, we have found that a typical bush bean plant will produce about a pint to a pint and a half per plant uh, on the conservative side. So you plant a 10-foot row, a plant every six inches, there's a lot of beans there. Also, pole beans will yield two to three times more than a bush bean will because of the space. You can grow it vertical, you can put a lot more in a, in a small area. Uh, so uh, a bush bean, uh, pole bean plant can produce up to 15 pounds of beans versus one bush bean plant. So zucchini is, uh, I guess what we would call a high value crop. Yes. You can get a lot of zucchini from one plant and you can get a lot of zucchini quickly because it seems like those suckers grow overnight once they start producing. So if you want something, maybe you want a lot of zucchini, maybe you like to use it for certain things, you don't have to plant a lot. And there's a lot of things you can do with zucchini. Right. So it's definitely something that to consider. And you can harvest it at any size, you know, two inches to eight inches. To We let them go sometimes very, very large because we use it to make zucchini relish out of it. And that way we can get more of it. They get a little more woody, but once you do the process of zucchini relish, the, the you don't notice the woodiness aspect of it. A typical plant, uh, three to nine pounds per plant. I think that's conservative. Uh, three to nine pounds per plant. You, we've gotten more than nine pounds off some. There's some zucchinis that we've harvested that's been more than nine pounds before. Yeah, some um, some ones that are a couple, uh, you know, a foot long, two feet long. Yeah. Uh, so it's tomatoes, on average, um, it can c- uh, produce a, a staked tomato plant will produce eight pounds per plant. That's conservative. We mm-hmm. we've gotten ten to fifteen, even twenty pounds off some tomatoes. And some tomatoes can, if you have good situation, good soil, good, good uh, growing situation, you can get them to grow eight, nine, ten feet tall. Look online; there's several of them that's done that. And twenty pounds is the high end. Ten pounds, I think, is but ten pounds off one plant. That's pretty good uh, on that. And the cherry variety, you can get between two and five hundred cherries, tomatoes or grape tomatoes off one single plant. Uh, across the and board. that's that's really ideal. I know a lot of people like those for snacking, and if you want to have snacks, tomato snacks, definitely. Well, you uh, talked about the tiny Tim tomato on the on the one plant there that we had on the porch. There was every bit of forty tomatoes just on that at one particular time that we were harvesting last year, and that's a sixteen high, sixteen inch high, in a one gallon grow bag, basically an, an heirloom dwarf variety tomato plant. Right. So cucumbers. So cucumbers are a nice plant to grow. Home homegrown cucumbers are quite delicious and fresh. No comparison. No comparison. Um, cucumbers don't. They they grow nicely. You can definitely, if you're planting pickling, you want to grow three to four plants for each quart of pickles you want to make. And you want to grow the pickling variety. Yes. Don't try to grow a slicing variety and use it for pickling. It's not going to. Doesn't work. work. Doesn't now, if you work. want, you know, slicing variety, you want to grow two to three plants per person in your household. Another thing to keep in mind, I just want to mention with the cucumbers, is that they don't have a long life. So they're going to die off usually here in in Wisconsin in, like, September, and that's normal. That's common. So if you have a cucumber that goes beyond that, that's great, but don't be surprised if that's the case. So the next one we want to look at is, um, let's talk about peppers. Peppers, a 10-foot row can yield you 5 to 18 pounds. Now, that's, that's a lot because you look at a pepper 
and peppers are all air inside. It's not like a tomato where it's all meat inside. So to get five pounds of peppers, you've got a lot of peppers. That's a lot of peppers. A lot of peppers. Now, peppers can be a challenge to grow at times, especially if if it's not been a warm summer. Hopefully, we'll have a, a warm, pepper-friendly summer. Um, but sometimes it's just not possible. So you might want to go keep the water to them. Keep the water to them. Go to farmers market, whatever. If you need to get some. And, and real nice quick peppers. on the peppers, if you're growing hot and mild, uh, you want to label them because Hungarian sweet and Hungarian hot peppers are identical until you bite into them. Or until you put them on your pizza. Yeah, that's right. And then you got a hot pizza. That's right. Uh, Root crops. Yeah. So something like carrots, seven to ten pounds per ten foot row. I, I, you kind of have to determine how many carrots you want. They, they're not. You can, you can can them. You can certainly. You have to pressure can those carrots. Yeah, you have to pressure yes. can them. Um, so you and you, they do store for a while. If you don't rinse the dirt off, they do store for a while, properly sealed in your in your free, in your and refrigerator. That's with, that's with any root crop. Do right. not clean the dirt off. It acts it acts as a barrier or prevention of spoilage for a longer period of time. So that's that's good. Uh, let's talk real quick on um, okra here. I know you don't like okra, but there are people that enjoy okra, and you and we found if we dehydrate it, the gre- the sliminess dissipates on it, and it's not nearly as bad for your particular taste. But uh, I, it, I still don't really like it. You don't much. like it. Now, if you no. look, if you watch videos in the south uh, from from Alabama, Georgia, the south uh, east portions of the United States, their okra plants get like the size of small maple trees, eight, nine, ten, twelve feet tall, and they cannot harvest everything that's off of them. They basically there's only so much they can harvest. A uh, uh, 10-foot row, 18-inch uh, spacing of plants, uh, can uh, produce 10 pounds, uh, 5 to 10 pounds per row. Now, that's uh, like peppers. There's a lot of air in an okra pot. That's a lot of okra. That's a lot of okra. We have been successful to grow okra here in Zone 5A in the upper Midwest. California, you'll be able to do that. Pennsylvania, Michigan, uh, wherever you're at, okra can be grown. You've just got to follow some of the rules and recommendations to have a successful harvest on that. Yeah, okra definitely something you should consider growing. And there's red, o- there's where there's burgundy okra, and there's green okra. So there's a couple of cho- choices, and there's 135 different varieties of okra in the world that you can purchase. So uh, if there, there was probably something there Great. that even you, Holly, might like. Okay, yeah. whatever. So <laughs> uh, rutabaga, it, it's kind of rutabaga. Rutabaga. People, a lot of people are doing this low carb thing. People don't realize that you can that rutabaga is a low starch vegetable. So maybe if you're like, hey, I'm trying to cut my carbs, trying to watch how many carbs I'm eating, try some rutabaga. You can. It's eight to thirty pounds per ten foot row. Rutabaga is just a hearty root crop. It's a little bit, I don't even know, uh, kind of like a cross between potato and a radish, I'd yeah. say. It's, it's, if, it's, if you're not sure, it's an acquired taste, I would say. But, it, I, I mean, I've cooked it down and mashed it and made it like mashed potatoes, and I like it. Right. Or you could do like some slicing thing and bake it. We baked it, you've, mm-hmm. you've chunked it, baked it, seasoned it, and it's not bad. No, like a, roast, like a roasted root vegetable. We like have found that the best rutabagas that we have been able to grow is in fall. They take 90 days to reach maturity. The frost in the evening or at night during the fall helps sweeten the bulb and the shorter days help it mature better. We've tried to grow it in the spring, had success one time. Uh, the long days and the warmth just doesn't work well for us when we're trying to grow um, okra. Well, let's. Uh, one thing that which we can uh, start preparing for is getting our lawns ready for to get rid of some of the bad bugs, preferably Japanese beetles right. uh, that we can get rid of. So we get we get a lot of questions about Japanese beetles, and spring is just around the corner. Soon you're going to be outside, and you want to think about what what's going on in your yard. So you can well, if you want to control common insect pets like Japanese beetles, weevils, borers, various beetles, and their larvae. Phylum Better Products has just the product for you. They um, are environmentally safe, biological pest control products. It is the first BT insecticide powerful enough to control both alar- adult and larvae st- stages of susceptible, susceptible pests, and they don't pose a risk to you. So you can go to phylumbioproducts.com. That's P H Y L L O N bioproducts.com. It works. If you want something that doesn't destroy the ecosystem environment in your area, check them out. PhylumBioproducts.com. Well, don't go anywhere. When we come back, it's Joe Carson. We're going to talk about growing in straw bales. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show.
Got a question? Email the show at twbgshow at gmail.com. Power Planter is a family-owned earth auger manufacturer. The Power Planter earth auger will transform your garden experience. It helps homeowners and professionals complete almost any planting or digging project faster and more efficiently than using a shovel or a spade. Power Planter earth auger creates loose dirt when drilling holes, giving your plants better root-to-soil contact to help reduce plant loss for healthy and more beautiful trees, shrubs, flowers, vegetables, and grass. All of our augers are hand-welded and made in the USA lifetime warranty. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. Soil Diva is the best kept secret in the gardening world. Soil Diva is an all-natural, liquid, biological soil and plant stimulant product. Check it out at soildiva.net. Big Fats has a variety of unique and delicious hot sauces available at mild, medium, and hot. A small company looking to change the world with all-natural hot sauces made from quality ingredients and a whole lot of love. BigFatsHotSauce.com Do you have a problem with deer or small herbivores eating your vegetation? There is a natural solution that is safe for your pets and family. BobX is the answer. An environmentally friendly solution to protect your plants will not wash off and is guaranteed. BobX deer was independently tested against nine known competitors and rated 93% effective, second only to a physical barrier. Bobex can be used on all types of ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Ask for it by name at your local independent garden center. Find out more? Visit Bobex.com. B-O-B-B-E-X dot C-O-M. Beans and Barley Market and Cafe, a neighborhood specialty grocery store for the east side and greater Milwaukee area, where you can find all you need, from fresh produce to bakery to organic frozen dinners, from wine to fresh squeezed carrot juice, a health food store with hundreds of products, vitamin supplements, bath and body items, magazines, cars, books, and a knowledgeable staff. Catering available, open daily at 8 a.m. The restaurant serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week with a menu of good, healthy, homemade food, including vegetarian and non-vegetarian specialties. 1901 East North Avenue, Milwaukee, 414 and online at beansandbarley.com. Understanding what your plants require via light makes all the difference. It's time for this week's Michigan Garden Moment. This Michigan Garden Moment is brought to you by MIGardener.com. With over 450 varieties of heirloom and organic flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents a pack. Find out more at MIGardener.com. There's numbers of varieties of vegetables and fruits in which you can plant in your garden. But knowing exactly where to plant them can be the difference between a great harvest or a disappointment by the end of the season. There are a number of crops that you can plant in your garden that can grow in partial shade. Partial shade, a good guideline, is direct light of four to six hours during the day. Crops such as beets, Brussels sprouts, carrots, cauliflower, celery, garlic, horseradish, kale, asparagus, radishes, rhubarb, potatoes, parsnips, bush beans, and pole beans, just to name a few. Now, these plants will all do phenomenal in full sun, but they also will produce in partial shade. There's a saying, if you're going to grow it for the root or the fruit, you need full sun. If you're going to grow it for the leaves or the greens, you need partial shade, or they'll grow in partial shade. That's somewhat true. These plants will produce in partial shade, and the varieties of many, many other ones available, but in full sun they will work. But this means that you can have a garden even if you have some shade in the backyard or the front yard. These also, many of them, will work in containers as well. So just because you have partial shade in your backyard or front yard doesn't mean you can't garden. There's a variety of vegetables and fruits that will be very productive even with partial shade sunlight in your garden. This Michigan Garden Moment is brought to you by MIGardener.com. With over 450 varieties of heirloom and organic flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents a pack. Find out more at MIGardener.com. Shield and Seal Vacuum Sealers and the highest quality vacuum sealing products, unique black and clear and all black bags, protecting your produce and product better than traditional bags. Find out more at ShieldandSeal.com. Flame Engineering, home of the Weed Dragon, the perfect propane torch kit for home and garden use for killing weeds no need to pull or spray 100 other uses find out more at flameengineering.com use coupon code wvg19 to get free shipping Root Assassin, a garden tool that does all the root functions with its advanced shovel that has serrated edges on both sides find out more information at rootassassinshovel.com 
Gardeners know the hardest part of building a garden is building the rows. Now there is a long overdue patented, hand-pulled, heavy-duty, lightweight row building marvel that you can find at rowmaker.com. The rowmaker can easily and quickly build multiple straight line, perfectly spaced rows of proportional height, width, and depth. This yellow workhorse makes building rows easy and so fast it will save you hours. Just pull it across your tilled garden and work smarter, not harder. See it to believe it at rowmaker.com. Planting your garden will never get easier. Wisconsin Greenhouse Company has custom-made greenhouses to suit your needs. Grow fruit and vegetables all year long. Strongest greenhouses available that will last a lifetime. Beautiful design available in any size and color. Weather resistant, energy efficient to save on that heating cost. Mix and match with glazings to suit your climate. Sturdy and durable. They'll hold up to those heavy snow loads. They'll even add them to homes for agricultural to lodging to entertaining. It's a great addition to any garden or landscape. Check them out at wisconsingreenhousecompany.com. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Eco Garden Systems, Rowmaker, Shield and Seal, World's Coolest Rain Gauge, Big Fats Hot Sauce, Chapin International, Drip Garden, Norwalk Juicers, New New Healing Ointment, Phylum Bioproducts, Soil Savvy, Tree Ripe. Find all sponsors at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com and thank them for their support. It's time to start looking at how we can upgrade or improve or make uh, fix our landscape around our homes. And if you want to do that, you know the most economical way is to buy in bulk. And Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center has that for you. They have over 40 varieties of bulk material. They have everything from gravel, sand, mulch, compost, all sorts of great stuff. And they have experts there to help you decide what you need. And they will advise you on what won't work if you have a, a goal in mind. They'll tell you this is not going to work, but this will. So that, that that's the big thing about Blue Mills. They've been around since 1955 and they value the customer. They don't just value the dollar. And you don't need a truck to go pick the stuff up. You could do it in a car. So you can go to 4930 West Loomis Road. That's just south of Layton. Call 414-282-4220. Or Blue Mills. Dot com. Some people believe gardening or make gardening out to be so difficult like The main winding was the normal lotus o deltoid type placed in panendermic semi-boloid slots of the stator. It's real simple. Get a seed, get some soil, put the seed in the soil, water it, and it's going to grow. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Oh, let's go to the Ivy Organic 31 Plant Guard Hotline and bring in our guest. Joel Carson is the inventor of the Strawbell Garden Method. He's also an author and an educator. The Strawbell Garden books have been printed in a number of languages and sold all over the world. Welcome to the program, Joel. Well, good morning. It's great to be with you. Well, thank you for taking time out of your day to join Holly and myself and enlighten us as well as our listeners on the, the Strawbell Gardening Method. Sure. So, Let's start with this question, Joel, so we're all on the same page. I didn't know the difference between straw and hay until I met Joey, I guess. So what is the difference between hay and straw? Well, straw is generally known as the remaining portion. Once a small grain or cereal grain is harvested, like oats or wheat, then the stock that is left over is baled up, and that's typically called straw. It's used for animal bedding. Anything that a, that livestock would eat, so we're talking about alfalfa or grass, baled grass hay, um, that's typically referred to as hay. Usually, generally, if you look at them, hay is green, straw is gold or, you know, brownish colored, um, where hay is always green. Hay is heavier because it has a higher moisture content usually. Straw should be a little drier, should be a little lighter. Um, but that's basically the difference. Now, here's the big secret about straw bale gardening. You don't actually have to always use straw. You could get by with a bale of hay if that's all you could find. Um, but generally, hay is more expensive, and it tends to decompose just a little bit faster than straw does. So it's, if you have your choice, take straw over hay. But if you don't have a choice, you certainly could use a bale of hay. Well, Joel, I'll ask you this question because we get asked this lots at our, at our garden talks. We do a straw bale certification talk. Uh, 
people ask, where can I get organic straw? And I didn't okay. know this was a, an issue because I grew up on a, on a wheat farm. We never, ever sprayed our wheat. And apparently this is a thing now that people spray wheat with chemicals that will translate over to the straw that we're trying to grow our vegetables in. Well, it's a little bit misleading. There, There's a few applications of what they call cloppy rallids or amino rallids that have been discovered, especially out on the East Coast. And that's a, actually an off-label use of that chemical. So they farmers shouldn't be doing that and then bailing it up. Um, that's the chemical that we need to be most concerned about would be cloppy rallids. Now, here's the advantage. The, the, the advantage is if you did happen to get a bale that had cloppy rallids in it, Anything you seeded or tried to grow in it simply wouldn't grow. And that would mean that you'd never eat any vegetables that were contaminated with any kind of an herbicide because they simply the bales simply wouldn't produce. But if you get a bale that has, like, for instance, glyphosate, farmers will use glyphosate as a, what we call a dry down in the fall to try to dry that straw up before they bale it. That has a half-life of 72 hours and evaporates very quickly, it's very volatile. And the microbes that are in the bales the following spring when we begin the straw bale gardening process and you grow bacteria in the bales, those bacteria are going to use any hydrocarbon in that bale as a source of food and quickly digest any hydrocarbons that would be left behind. So they're going to leave no trace whatsoever. We've sent in lots of studies, uh, tests to be studied, little samples, from the straw bales that we know had diphosphate sprayed on them, and there's absolutely no remnant of it remaining after about six weeks. It's completely gone. So. Okay. Now, you can't just you just can't plant directly into the straw. You have to do this process called conditioning. You talk about right. in, in your book. Explain what that means. Well, conditioning really when you when people look at a straw bale garden, their first thought is, well, we're growing vegetables in straw, and we're really not. What we're growing the vegetables in is very recently decomposed straw, which is very different. We're going to spend two weeks actually feeding the bacteria that already exist inside of that bale. And we feed them what they like to eat, which is a source of nitrogen. This could be organic using, like, blood meal, or it could be traditional just using lawn fertilizer. And that feeding that bacteria causes them to colonize and reproduce very rapidly. They'll colonize the whole bale, and then they begin to metabolize the straw and break that straw down into the molecules that made the cells inside the straw. So now once these molecules are broken down, now you can put a new plant in there, and those molecules can now be absorbed through the roots of that new plant. So you have to go through this whole biological process where we completely fill that bale with bacteria. You won't be able to see it, Holly, but you can feel it. You can put your hand in there, and you'll see that those bales get nice and warm. And that warmth is being generated from bacteria reproducing inside of that bale. It's a pretty amazing thing. It's pretty simple biology, but it's absolutely necessary to prep that bale, to condition it. If you don't prep it ahead of time, whatever you plant in there is going to be nitrogen-starved, and it's very quickly going to turn yellow and die. Well, whenever we do the straw bale gardening correctly, we get this question, I'll address it to you, do we have to worry about bugs or diseases like we would in traditional ground gardening? Well, you know, soil gardening tends to have a buildup of diseases and insect problems over the years because any spores from a disease that will harbor over winter will do so in soil. It's very easy for them to embed themselves in the soil. Same thing with larvae of insects, they'll They'll drill down into the soil, and they'll be there over the winter, and then the next spring they come back right away. The advantage we have with straw bale gardening is we're starting our own new soil inside of this bale. Now, it's really the inside of the bale is really going to become early-stage soil. But our advantage is because this is virgin soil inside the bale, there's no soil-borne disease from last year or soil-borne insects from the previous year. So at least you get a head start in the beginning of the season without any insect or disease problems already being present inside of that bale. I'm not going to tell you that you 100% eliminate all disease and insect problems, because you don't. You still may get flying insects that will come in because they're looking, of course, for the juice from your squash vine, and etc. So you still may need to do some insect control, but the, the reason that people have more success with straw bale gardening is because we really encourage a trellis above the bales. Get all those vines and foliage up on that trellis 
and it makes it much easier to spot infector disease problems when they first arrive. You know, if your cucumber vine is hanging up on this trellis, it's much easier to see the leaves on both sides of the plant when you're walking through your garden. And then when you spot a problem, you can run and get your in, uh, insecticide, your um, could be even in something as mild as soapy water, you know, insecticidal soap or neem oil. And you bring that out there. Now, the trick with that mild insecticide is you need to get 100% coverage on that plant. So you can spray both sides of that that trellis and get really good coverage, thorough coverage, which gives you a much better kill. If you're spraying vines on the ground, you only get the tops of the leaves. And it's very difficult to control them. The insects will hide out underneath the leaf while, while it dries on top, and then they come back up on the surface. Well, so part of it is the cultural change of the does. Well, now, people are often worried about um, the mice and bees, or specifically like wasps, like harm, harmful bees, wasps, using the bale as a home. Is there anything they should be concerned about this, or why would they be concerned no. about that? Yeah, you know, if you don't keep the bales moist, if you were to throw a straw bale out and just, um, you know, never water it, or keep, even if you keep it covered up, that's a way you'll often get mice, because they're looking for a nice dry place to build a house. You know, you got to think if you were a mouse, what would you be looking for? I'd be looking for a nice bale of straw to build a house in. But if you arrive at that straw bale hotel and it happens to be soaking wet inside, you know, you're not going to be inclined even as a mouse to build a house there because you want to have babies and you want it to be nice and dry. And that moist, hot uh, straw bale, you know, gets really hot early in the spring as it begins to decompose is not a desirable place for them to be anyway. Um, especially during the summer months, there are so many other options for them to find, find a place to build a house. Uh, in the winter, it might be a different story. But, you know, when you, in the spring, when you turn your water on and get those bales wet again, the, any mice that are in there take off. Now, bees, especially ground-dwelling bees like um, uh, hornet, there's a type of couple types of ground hornet that will tend to build a nest in a straw bale. If you ever see a nest being built or already built, they build them very quickly in your straw bale garden. A great trick is to put a um, shop vac right out by the opening. Put the suck hose of your shop vac right by the entryway and turn it on just about half an hour before sunset and come back an hour after sunset or a half hour after sunset and all of them will be captured inside of that um, wet dry vac. And then just put one little squirt of wasp spray in there and you don't have to even get close to them at that point, and they'll all be dead inside of your shop back. So it's a real easy way to get rid of them. Um, you know, most pollinators type bees are not going to be building nests inside there, so you don't need to worry about that. If you did happen to get some pollinator bees that built a nest inside there, uh, you probably could get someone to come and move that nest for you, move that hive for you. Um, there's a lot of people looking for rogue uh, hives of bees that they'll come and get one and move it out of there for you. Well, Joel, where can we find uh, more about you, the method, the book? Where can we go and uh, get the book at? I'll tell you, we're pretty much everywhere, but com is a, our home website. Um, it's a great place to get links to everything. But we're on Facebook and Pinterest and Instagram and Snapchat. And we're everywhere. So if you look for Strawbell Gardening online, you're going to find it. Well, Joel, we greatly appreciate you taking time out of your day to, to enlighten Holly, myself, and all of our listeners with the Straw Bell Gardening Method. Thanks for the time. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And when we come back, we'll give it your, our time to you. We're answering your garden questions. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Don't go anywhere. Send your questions in now to the IV Organics 3-in-1 Plant Garden Instant Access text hotline at 414-368-9311. That number again, text 414-368-9311 and send your garden question in. 
Get your garden growing with a Chapin Garden Seeder. Eliminate the back-breaking work of planting seeds in your garden. The Model 8701B Seeder makes it easy to accomplish planting rows of seeds of various sizes. Find the Chapin Garden Seeder online or order it through your local Home Depot, True Value, or Do It Best Hardware Store. To see the full line of Chapin Lawn and Garden products, go to www.chapinmfg.com. Com. The Norwalk Juicer is the best cold-pressed juicer on the market. Studies have shown the Norwalk Juicer produces 50 to 100% more juice than other juicers. And juice from the Norwalk is higher in minerals and nutritionally superior. Not only do you get more juice from your produce, but also better quality juice. Check it out at NorwalkJuicers.com. Use coupon code GARDENTALK to get free continental U.S. shipping on the Model 290 Juicer. Drip Garden is a self-watering, self-fertilizing, pop-up vertical garden with automatic timer. Easy to use, durable, grow 36 plants in a 4 foot by 4 foot area. DripGarden.com Garden seeds do not have to cost a fortune. Just 99 cents at MIGardener.com Now with over 450 varieties of non-GMO, heirloom, and organic flower, vegetable, and herb seeds available year-round. Pay less and get more seeds. Shipping as low as $2.50. That just makes sense. Go to MIGardener.com for seeds and garden needs. Tools and special blend fertilizers. MIGardener.com. It's that simple. Family owned and operated. Root Assassin, a garden tool that does all the root functions with its advanced shovel that has serrated edges on both sides. Find out more information at RootAssassinShovel.com. Never question your garden soil again. Know what's in your soil with confidence. Professional grade soil test for the home gardener. My Soil Savvy has the easiest soil test on the market. Ship it to them, get your report, emailed with nutrients recommendation, and grow happy, healthy plants. MySoilSavvy.com. Use coupon code TWVG19 and save 10% at checkout. Here at Outpost Natural Foods, it's not just that we're community-owned that sets us apart. It's the fabulous foods we sell. We celebrate Earth Day every day by offering our customers the finest natural and organic food selections in greater Milwaukee. Outpost local farmers and vendors provide our stores with a delicious selection of fresh seasonal produce that you won't want to miss. Outpost stores are located in Milwaukee, Wauwatosa, Bayview, and Mequon. We're a real Milwaukee original where anyone can shop and anyone can join. For the whole scoop about Outpost, we invite you to visit www.outpost.coop. The number one key to healthy, productive plants are the roots. Starting from seed to full-grown plants, RootMaker.com has the answer. From seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots, creating a fabulous root system, never again will you have root-bound plants to multiple gallon grow bag sizes to raise beds. RootMaker.com has your grow needs covered. Visit RootMaker.com. Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center offers an awesome selection of high quality garden and landscape products. We have just the plants you're looking for. Annuals, perennials, veggies, herbs, and more. Plus, you can always count on us to answer all of your questions and offer expert advice. Blue Mills also carries the largest selection of bulk landscape materials in the area. Enjoy a beverage from our coffee shop while your kids run around in our huge playground. Join our growing list of highly satisfied customers. Visit the garden center that offers everything you're looking for. Visit Blue Mills today. Blue Mills, 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Ivy Organics, Power Planter, Root Assassin, Beans and Barley, BioSafe, BobX, Pomona Universal Pectin, Pro Plugger, Standard Process, Tomato Snaps. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Honeybee Organic 3-1 Plant Garden naturally protects plants against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents, protects newly installed plants and trees, shields, prune, and damaged surfaces for use on your roses, fruit, nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For more information, visit ivorganics.com. You can reach us by the ivorganics.com 301 plant guard email inbox, and that address is twvgshow at gmail.com, or you can text us on the instant access ivorganics.com text line, and that's 414 368 9311. 
You can tweet us using hashtag TWVG. Our Twitter handle is at TWVG Show. Don't forget our text line is at 414-368-9311. We love when we get questions via social media, TWVG Show, all of those, gmail.com, all of those platforms. Uh, question, can I put a raised bed uh, with a liner on my rock patio? We certainly can. I don't think you would need um, a, a liner, especially if it's just like... I guess if it was huge, even if it was huge yeah. jagged rocks, you would just have to make sure you somehow make the it if could, you, the wood, you know, flat enough. But the rocks should just count as drainage. Because people put raised beds on concrete slabs, uh, that type of thing. So uh, you're creating an environment inside of that raised bed, and you want drainage. Not all fabric or liners are porous enough that would drain a lot of water out quickly. It would begin to pull up. So you have to be aware of that as well. Yeah, you could definitely make it look real nice, too. I have red potatoes that have sputted, and I've been saving to plant. When can I plant them? Zone 5. And then I see I have onions growing that were from last year growing already outside. Just wondering if it's safe to to throw the taters in. Please and thank you. Uh, Zone 5. Okay, so anytime you plant potatoes, you are going to put them either, you do like the no-dig method, uh, you put straw on top of them, or you dig in the ground and bury them. You need the soil to be a minimum of 45 degrees Fahrenheit consistently. 50 preferred. If we go below that and we get moisture, let's say it's 40 40 or 38, we get moisture and those potatoes are in the ground, they are going to sit there and they are going to rot in the ground. Uh, They just cannot handle that cold temperature. So you much want to check the soil temperature. If you're going to dig the traditional trench method, about 6 inches deep with a thermometer, a meat thermometer, a probe, something of that nature, 45 minimum consistently, 50 preferably. Otherwise, you're going to waste your time planting potatoes. So last season, I planted tomato plants in 15, 20 gallon grow bags. They did extremely well. You 60 percent of compost and 40 percent of potting soil. What do you recommend to rejuvenate the soil in the bags? Replace. What should I do? So simply, what you're going to do is just remove about a quarter of the top part and then just replace like with a compost or a planting mix. And you don't have to mix it in. You don't have to mix it in. You just it'll it'll. Uh, do its thing. Right. As you s- settle and as you water, the nutrients from that top quarter will permeate down into the grow bag, and you still want to follow the recommendations on your uh, fertilizer, Dr. Earth, whatever the case is, uh, because the plant still needs nutrients in order to... Um, th- the compost is not going to be... I don't want to say enough, but you always want to have that insurance of that organic fertilizer as a backup for the plant to have adequate nutrient um, availability. Okay, so can I grow zucchini plant, one zucchini plant, in a 12-inch pot? Um, not well, really. It, de- well, it depends, depends on, on how deep it is. Depends on the if pot. If it's 12 inches across, that's okay. But you want to probably make sure it's at least, I don't know, what? 12 um, inches. 12 inches yeah. to, uh, uh, yeah, 18 inches If you're looking deep. at grow bags, and I would recommend growing in a grow bag simply because the air prunes the roots, a uh, root maker bag, uh, because of the size and the availability of space, a 10-gallon grow bag would be a, a good size bag for a zucchini. Um, 15 would be better. But again, you've got a lot of nutrients that you're going to... And with these containers, you're going to have to supplement some type of nutrients throughout the season, whether it's that granular fertilizer, because as you water, as it rains, the, the, it's called leaching, and it, it pulls out valuable nutrients that the plant is needing because of just the natural progression of the water going through the soil. It happens in your garden, too, but there's so much microbial life and worms and, and good bugs and that, that bring that nutrients and revitalize it in your soil that you... Uh, don't have to worry about it in the actual ground. But in a container, 10-gallon, 15-gallon grow bag would be ideal. And then also we have last question, or not last question, but um, what should I, what soil temp, what soil should the soil temp be to direct sow cucumbers and yeah, a direct sow would, you would want to be about 65 degrees excuse me, at the the, where you're going to plant them. Right. So not not ambient temperature because so you want to make sure your soil is at 65. 
When is a good time to plant peas? Well, since peas are a cool weather crop, they can withstand some cold temperatures. The ideal temperature for growing peas is between 55 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, however, the germination of the seeds can withstand temperatures down to as low as 28 degrees at root zone. But the seedlings and the plants cannot tolerate cold temperatures below 19 degrees Fahrenheit. So as long as you can get the soil to be worked and get it nice and fluffy, you can plant peas. And peas need to go on a trellis. If you don't trellis them, they will fall over and snap the stems and your production will be done. You won't have any. A problem that Holly and I have struggled with is growing successful potatoes. So we're going to go out to Ben Bartley. He is from Standard Process Farms going to give us some of the tips on how they grow successful potatoes in the ground. Standard Process is your trusted whole food supplement manufacturer for over 90 years. To help identify the best supplements for you, find your local health care professional today. Go to standardprocess.com forward slash patient. Hi, this is Ben Bartlett from the Standard Process Organic Farm. Today we've got a question about growing potatoes. Potatoes are one of those crops that's pretty easy. You throw them in the ground and sometimes you get a great crop and then sometimes they're tricky all at the same time because you, you plant them and you do all the prep work and you don't end up with very many potatoes at the end of the year. So a few tips on potatoes. To get the most out of your spuds, you gotta have the right kind of soil. You gotta have a sandy or a very loamy type of soil that's easy for the plants to grow And Think about them, they're growing roots and producing that fruit underground, so they've gotta be able to have move the soil out of the way and grow those crops. Don't use livestock manure or, or very fresh compost when you start planting them because you'll just about every time you'll end up with scab on the surface of your potato. They need consistent watering, not too wet, not too dry, but keep in mind you're using very light soils, so they're going to need watering more often. And they are also fairly heavy feeders, so you got to fertilize them ahead of time and maybe trickle fertilize them throughout the season. If you haven't grown potatoes before, make sure you watch out for Colorado potato beetles. They're soft little slugs, orange colored slugs early in their life and then they turn into these striped beetles which will devastate your plants. Good luck growing potatoes. Make sure that you wait for those vines to dry down before you dig out your crop. Thank you, Ben, for the information on the potatoes. That certainly will help out Holly and myself as we grow potatoes in the ground and try to get a better crop this year than we did last year. Well, we are out of time, and we certainly appreciate yours. Before we get into what's coming up next week on the program, I want to remind you that the executive sponsor of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show is Power Planter. Planting conditions are always favorable with the Power Planter Earth Auger. No matter what the job is, Power Planter has the right size for you. Simply attach to a drill and let the Power Planter do the work for you. Create planting holes fast and efficiently with ease. No matter the soil type, it does the job effortlessly. Increase your root to soil contact. Leave the shovel and spade in the shed. Hand welded and made in the USA, we offer a lifetime warranty on product defects. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. Coming up next week on the program, same time, same station, do not miss it. We're going to go over the right ways to build raised beds. There's a variety of different options, whether you buy one from Root Maker or you create one yourself, we'll go over the right ways, as well as reasons why we do not till our garden. We've never tilled our garden with an actual mechanical tiller, and we'll go over the science and the reasons we do that, and it may influence you, as well as Maya Toll will be with us. She's an herbalist and an author, plus we'll answer your your garden questions. Miss any portion of this program or want to revisit it in its entirety, you can do that in a couple of different options. One, by going to the website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and clicking on the radio tab at the top of the page. Or uh, you can go to your favorite search engine uh, podcast providing website and search the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener podcast and download an episode there. Or you can go to the highlight tab on the wes- website and uh, search specific topics that we've covered in Season 1, Season 2, and in Season 3. And until next week, for Holly Baird, I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden. You have been listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. Tell a friend and join Joey and Holly again next week so we can all grow together. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is a production of the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com in association with WI Garden Media Broadcasting, live from the WNOV 860 AM and the W293CX 106.5 FM, Courier Communications Studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin.